<laughs> I think this one person, I've done this for many, many years, and one person I definitely don't have to introduce, do I? <laughs> Shakira, the greatest entertainer living and no. also does so much work for public good and advocacy. And God bless you for doing that. Thank you. God bless Thank you. you. God bless you. I was just thinking, um, reading about you, you won so many awards, you've performed in front of hundreds of tens of thousands of people, uh, 12 Grammys, it's no joke. And now the Crystal Award. Was that special to that? Or are awards now part of your life? Well, this is special. No, of course, it's a very prestigious award. Uh, but I think that that, that uh, it's mostly a reflection, I hope that it's a reflection on the global understanding of the importance of investing in early childhood development. Right. I hope that it means that uh, the issue is becoming top of mind right. for everyone. Right. You've been working on this for many years, and you're a very hands-on person in everything you do. Uh, you don't just sing, you write your songs, you don't just mm -hmm. dance, you get into chore choreography, presentation, production, editing. You're a tiger mom with your children. <laughs> yeah. That's what you've said, actually. And now with Not the most relaxed mom ever, I can say that. <laughs> Not the most. And now uh, in child development, are you as hands-on? And um, are there lessons from your early years which you are you learned and you're implementing now? You mean in, in, in what we do yes, in your on the child, field? In, yeah, education. Education, yeah, I'm, I'm definitely on top of every, every detail on how the schools work, the progress that we're making in our schools. Um, I decided to create my own foundation when, when I was only 18, and since then we've been working on uh, education, trying to provide high quality education. So it is a challenge and it comes with many obstacles that that we had to overcome and we have to still overcome every, on a daily basis. We work in areas where, mm, in very remote areas, where literally there's nothing. Sometimes we uh, encounter a tremendous lack of infrastructure, no potable water, in many cases no electricity, um, no paved roads. So it definitely means that, that we have to work twice as hard in order to, to offer a quality education. But not only that, also the kids that we attend to, they, most of them belong to families that have uh, been directly affected by violence, that have lost even family members, so mm, you can imagine the, the, the challenges that we encounter when we try to provide that education. So I have to be constantly uh, understanding, learning about their needs. Um, I dedicate a huge portion of my time to, to advocating for education for all. Uh, but also the the to, also to improving um, what we offer in our schools uh, in Colombia and other places sorry. in the world. I've noticed also that you don't just provide education again, typical Shakira style, high quality education, even <laughs> if it's for the poorest person, right? Yes, exactly. You That's focus it. on that. Yeah, from the beginning, I I I didn't just want to build schools. I wanted to build uh, state of the art schools. But what does that mean? It means that um, they had to be comprehensive, integral. They had to um, they have to encompass not only four walls and learning materials. They had to encompass uh, programs to engage the entire community to maintain the schools. Um, school feeding program is 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 the the, the cornerstone upon. Our, uh, upon our, prog our programs are right. in our schools are built upon which I'm sorry my English <laughs> no, no, <that's> <laughs> upon which my, our our programs are built. I dare not uh, even pronounce. It's definitely yes. the core, it's the center and the core of 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 our work. You know, offering food yes. in our schools is oh, is such yeah. a key, vital element in order to keep the the kids in school. Um, so little by little, we were introducing other elements that 
were improving um, uh, what we were offering, the, the kind of education that we were offering. You know, involving the parents, uh, trained teachers, uh, and also uh, even 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 uh, making available school uh, sports facilities to the rest of the community. And uh, on this, Barça Foundation has been uh, very very uh, instrumental. <laughs> we have built a, a football. Fields, football pitch. I would have thought that's the first thing schools. you'd built. <laughs> <laughs> not, not exactly the first, but you know, little by little, we, we do. We, we've been doing more and more improvements. Uh, but I'm telling you, it's so worth it. Every penny that we've invested in schools and in, in, in education have been so so worth our while. I ha I don't feel that I have wasted any any Obvious. money or efforts or energy when it comes yes. to investing in education, especially on ECD. You see these strategies have early childhood, re development. early childhood development strategies have really demonstrated that that um, that are so so um, vital when it comes to to keeping kids in school as well and to making sure that they succeed not only in school but later in life. But it's the story of your life. Shakira only takes things which have got hurdles and then you smash each one of them. I remember as a kid. Your music teacher said, you singer, forget it. <laughs> <laughs> Can you yeah. imagine a music teacher? He didn't like my voice. <laughs> didn't like your voice. Never let me enter the school <laughs> choir. <laughs> yeah, that's, that was a big frustration for me. <laughs> <laughs> Luckily, then, my dad was as stubborn as, as me, and he always encouraged me and said, no, 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 your voice is amazing. <laughs> Someday they will know. <laughs> because I had a very powerful vibrato, you know. Which I still, I'm sorry, yeah. which I still keep. It's a very, um, I think a very uh, signature thing of mine. But back in the day, it was kind of like a little disrupting for the, the rest of the choir. Right. So I, many of my classmates <laughs> used to say, Shakira, you sing like a goat. <laughs> <laughs> I kind of do have a little goaty thing going on. <laughs> That's what the teacher said. <laughs> well, yeah. yeah. And, um, and, but you know, my, my parents were always there, um, insisting on, 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 on the fact that I had to believe in me and in my dreams. So I really owe them my career, really. Uh, More than that, genes. Every morning you should thank them for your genes. <laughs> <laughs> the other, uh, Jana no, genes are not that important. I mean, <laughs> like Professor Heckman says, they, you know, some, some genes can be actually activated. By, by, can be triggered by the environment. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Environment is crucial. <laughs> but I also remember when you switched to English, you were already a big star in, in Latin, uh, most of Latin American countries, but then you switched to English and the Rolling Stones said, Shakira, what are you up to crazy? Didn't you remember that? And you what, proved them wrong. What so did you they had say? Rolling Stone magazine. Yeah. Remind said, me, I have a bad memory now. I think. No, she, they said you shouldn't speak, you shouldn't sing in English. That's crazy, and you proved them wrong. I mean, you've had just so many huge hits. Well, no, I, I don't recall that. Maybe I, I just I only remember the good stuff. You remember uh, the good stuff. Well, I must well, say, a lot. Of, of course, I had people who believed in me at the beginning, and people who didn't. Um, but yeah, I guess I, I've been. More than talented, I think I've been very persistent, you know, and I don't and, and I think disciplined that's, as well. That's being modest. <laughs> which nobody, would anybody here agree with that? No, it's more than it's talent plus. And I think the work that you're you, you're leveraging your popularity to reach out to a wider audience and people can learn from what you do is just wonderful. Hundreds of schools you started. How about a round of applause oh. for just doing it? <laughs> Honestly, God bless you. Really. Yeah. Well, you know what? I've had um, a great team of people. I haven't. I would have not been able to 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 achieve many of the things that I have achieved uh, in, in in life, both in professionally and in philanthropically, if I didn't have you know a, a great team of of uh, committed human beings who who want to see changes the same way I. I do. I've read about your dad. I mean, I just think he's a wonderful person. Of course, dad power, somebody said, good <laughs> for dad power, right? And I do remember him 
your name means grateful or gratitude. Yeah. And he did something for you at a tough time, for, so you understood <laughs> the meaning of gratefulness. He took you to a playground. You know, my, my dad, uh, He's a dreamer, an idealist, and he hasn't he hasn't been quite the the, <laughs> the, the best uh, business person. So we, at some point in our lives, when actually when I was seven seven years old, uh, we lost pretty much everything we had. He 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 was doing quite well uh, with his with his uh, jewelry business, but then he made a couple of bad decisions and. <laughs> Voila. <That's life>. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, we uh, we had a financial crisis in our family, and my mom also wasn't doing very well with her own business, and things changed for us. And and I, I never had a car ever again until I was able to buy my own <laughs> when I was 15 with a fake license. <laughs> but <laughs> uh, in. Uh, and Did he know that? Yeah, but, <laughs> yeah, well, no, an uncle helped me. <laughs> okay. Um, and, um, you know, it's, uh, for, for, for us, uh, losing, losing our, our financial stability was, was quite shocking and, and it m removed our, the grounds, our grounds. But, and for me, it was quite, a, quite an impact, you know, and, and I was very shocked by what, what was going on and seeing uh, the, so many things change around me. And th that they took me to the, to the park where many orphans live in Barranquilla, in my hometown. He took you to a and park where orphans were? Okay. Where, yeah, and these orphans, usually they, you know, they, they sniff glue or uh, resort to, uh, to things like, like, to terrible things like those yeah. in order to, to survive. <laughs> the tragedy of their lives, you know. And they showed me that other reality and it 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 marked me forever. I, I never forgot that night and it made me uh, wanna do something about it. And and I made a promise to myself that day and you know being very being very, very little. I was only seven years old, but I mm -hmm. I decided that day I decided that I wanted to succeed in life. I needed to bring my family back. You need to I needed to vindicate them socially and economically and someday. But I also wanted to do something about those kids. Uh, so my entire life that that image remained inside of me and and accompany me, and and when I was able to have you know my big break in in Latin America with my album Pies Descalzos, uh, Barefoot translates Barefoot. I decided to create my own foundation Pies for descalzos. children, and it was called right after my my album as well. It's called Barefoot, Bare, the Barefoot Foundation. Right. And since then, we've been working for children and specifically um, providing them a high quality education. It was a turning point that it was definitely to some point. extent is motivated you for doing what you're doing right now? Sure. Wow. Mm. You also wrote after that, I think your father also lost a son, and you wrote a beautiful song. Beautiful, it made my hair stand <laughs> up. And Dark Glasses. Yeah, I think that was my first song. Yes. Yeah, when I was eight, eight years old. I eight years old. Yeah, my first song, and, and actually it was included in my first album that was released when I was 13. I started very early. <laughs> <laughs> And the dark glasses was. Um, yeah, the dark glasses. I think it was a metaphor for uh, him trying to like hide, or conceal the the pain of his loss. Right. I m imagine that in my in my childish head, when that's that's how I interpreted things. And so you know, I wrote a song about it with a, with a spin on it. Yeah. You know. Beautiful. Yeah. Major um, emotional kind of turning points in your childhood, which obviously has helped you choose how to teach and what to teach little kids. Yeah, um, you know, coming from a country like mine, growing, being born and, and, and raised in a country like Colombia, um, it definitely sh shaped me, you know, as a person I am today and shape my views on the world and on what we can do. 
and I, if I'm sure about something, is that we can all uh, we can all be active. We can all help contribute in some some way to change uh, those realities that we don't agree with. You know, those things that we are not that we grow up to intolerant of, and and that you don't really have need to be a celebrity to to affect change. You know, you can. You can be a stay stay at home mom. You can be a, a, a young person going to college or in college. You can be uh, a journalist, of course. <laughs> uh, but everybody nowadays, thanks to the power of social media, anybody really can, has a platform and a voice. Right. Right. And there's so much that everyone can do, you know, to make issues like the lack of access to ECD programs, top of mind. Well, so everybody can, talks about it. All I can say is two things. One is thank God you're an entertainer, because I was at the World Cup final in South Africa, and you came in the stadium, and the whole stadium, you made them rock. <laughs> that was just a wonderful moment. you remember that? Waka yeah. Waka, you were just... I've been at the World Cup three times in a row. I, know, I don't think times. they're going to invite me anymore. <laughs> uh, yeah. Uh, 2006, 2010, um, and, and the last yes, one, 2014 yes. in Brazil. Yeah, I was there. Um, but the year that was really uh, uh, exceptional for me was 2010, which is when I met the father of my kids. Yes. <laughs> so it had a double purpose. That, <laughs> that double whammy, yeah. yeah. So, like, you're amazing, t uh, talented, and you, you don't just write songs, as I mentioned, uh, sing songs, you write them, you get involved in everything. So everybody wonders, if you weren't a singer, entertainer, songwriter, what would you be? Hmm, probably a doctor. A doctor? Yeah, like, I like medicine. I would have probably gone to medical school. But now I'm so uh, fascinated by neuroscience and all the new discoveries uh, on the brain, on the human brain, that I would probably, that would have probably <laughs> been my specialty in neuroscience. Wow. Yeah, and you can do so much for people as a doctor. I think so. I think that, you know, if we all had the, the consciousness, the, the awareness that we can all do, do so much for others, no matter what you do in life, I mean, um, as a matter of fact, for, for the issue of, of early childhood that needs so much awareness, uh, public campaigns are such an important part of it. And like I said before, making the issue top of mind. Anyone can share thoughts uh, on the internet. Yeah. Anyone can share literature on the, on the, on the, on the issue. Um, if you work in the... In the in, in, in PR and, and marketing, you can help craft a marketing campaign that that perhaps uh, shows parents and teachers how to best stimulate their child, their children in the first years of their lives. If you are if if, if you are in in the mobile and tech industry, for example, you can share your bandwidth. You can use yeah. your bandwidth to 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 share or give for free educational material. Yeah. Uh, it's amazing. Actually. Yeah, universities can, can step after. up the research, can actually help develop a curriculum for uh, for pre-K, which does, doesn't exist currently in many, many countries. So there is really so much that can be done. And like I, I said before, you don't have to be a politician yeah. or a singer, songwriter, or a model. Or, Nowadays you can, you know, be, you to can reach out. To bring attention, to you draw attention up, to yeah. these important yeah. issues. Or um, other causes that people yeah. really... Um, you know, that resonate with them. Let me take a quick poll of the audience. How many would you would have preferred Shakira be a doctor and how many prefer her being an entertainer? <laughs> Hands I'd up for be, doctor. I'd be an amazing doctor. <laughs> no, every, entertainer? How many be the entertainer? <laughs> Everybody entertainer. So just as well you did. I've always wondered, you had I'd so I'd be a many... sexy doctor, though. <laughs> <laughs> I put my best effort. <laughs> Uh, I've always wondered one famous song which you wish you had sung. There's so many songs that yeah. I sometimes feel Sorry. like, oh, damn, I, I wish, wish I, I would have that. written that one, you know? <laughs> it happens often. I think it happens to all of us uh, yeah. singers and that we wish we would have had those songs. I uh, would have thought of that one first. Such a brilliant idea. You know? 
can't think of anything right now, but I do, I do get that feeling often. You do get it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You used to sing, and now, fortunately, it's my generation. I can see a few. Uh, Elvis Presley, always on my mind. Oh, that's an amazing song. Yeah, you used to sing. You mm -hmm. sang it beautifully. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I sang, sang it one once line? for a uh, VH1 special. Yeah. Uh, the Divas. <laughs> <laughs> remember vividly because it was Mariah Carey. Um, there, were, there was uh, yes. yeah, Melissa Edwidge, Mary J. Blige. One? Cher was there. Yeah, yeah. yeah, she's amazing. And we were all singing like classic songs. Um, right. And I had to sing that one. Actually, I chose that one. I like it. Elvis fan? Like your dad? Yeah, big time. Yeah? yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. You won't sing one line of Always on Your Mind now? Ah. Uh, <laughs> we'll join in. <laughs> ready to join in? Of yep, course, we'll join. Um, you were always on my mind. You were always on my mind. That's it. Amazing. Wow. Beautiful. I'm shy. Wow, that was really good. <laughs> Did you say you were shy? I am shy. That's wonderful. I swear to God. I mean, I got to I gotta have the, the you know, the, everything yeah, yeah. the proper stage, the, the band in the back. Everything has to be ready for for you know, for, for the whole production. <laughs> but when when you when you when I'm in the middle of like a small group, I get a little shy. Yeah. This is a, <laughs> this is a small group for me. So. You, you need you need twenty five thousand people. Exactly. Then you're not I, need, shy. I need more, and then I get woo, you know, yeah. loosen up. <laughs> now, in your, I've always wondered, in your generation, our generation, me and your dad, same generation, haven't left you the greatest world. It's polluted, climate change. So a lot from us you deal, should de-learn, and some of you did. Now you, for the kids you're teaching, back to child development, what if your generation should they not learn or de-learn? Um, I, I, I agree with you. I think that my parents' generation and generations before them had to deal with so much suffering and they struggled so much that perhaps um, they grew immune to to human pain and uh, and those images of destruction became commonplace for 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 many of them and and perhaps they accepted or assumed the f assumed that they couldn't change uh, the reality that they were brought up with you know uh, that they were unchangeable truths. Uh, so I would certainly hope that my kids don't 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 feel that way, and that they There's no know such thing that as they an unchangeable can, truth. Exactly, you can't change anything. They, of course, that they can really be uh, agents of change. Uh, they can be the architects of their own destiny, our common de destiny as as a human race, and and that they can really contribute something to society. Uh, yeah, I think that indifference is, is the worst, and complacency is, is the worst enemy of progress. So there's one thing that uh, Shakira has promised to tell us in a couple of minutes, one secret in her life <laughs> that she's never told anybody, <laughs> and she's going to tell you guys now, even though you're not 25,000 people. <laughs> Secret. But, but before you say that, influences in your life, these turning points, two or three of them that affect your child development, I mean your approach to child development, in your personal life, three influences, uh, your turning points that you think, look, I want my, the kids I teach not to go through that or to learn from that. Um, well, I, I know that, for example, uh, if we, if we, I was born and raised also in a country at war. In my country, uh, I saw a conf an internal conflict that yeah. surrounded me for. By the way, I do many want to years. say to everybody, Colombia is the most beautiful country in the world. <laughs> You're a big most fan. <laughs> underestimated. People don't know enough about it. If you can go there, gorgeous country and wonderfully friendly people. Sorry, I interrupted. It's beautiful. It's true, and its people are the best. I think yeah. because they are. Well, the best the, the country has to offer, really. Yeah. Uh, they make you feel at home, right? Yeah, yeah. Well, I'm just bold. <laughs> yeah. Our whole family was just looked after by a family of Colombians who gave up their life for that. You know, it was wonderful. Oh, but you were saying. That's very sweet. I love it when someone speaks so highly of my country. Oh. 
Um, but what were we talking about? <laughs> <laughs> influences, sorry. Influences in your life. It's called post-pregnancy brain. <laughs> but it has lasted like four years in my case. Mm. Couple of influences in your life which you make sure your children uh, that you've learned from and you don't want them to go through it and you, you make sure in your teaching. Well, violence mainly. Violence, I, yeah. I grew up in a very violent yeah. country and, and, and now all Col Colombians, all well, more than ever, are hopeful that, that our kids and the, and the newer generations and generations to come will be able to live in a peaceful environment where they can flourish. And, uh, however, I re I'm convinced that if we do want long-lasting peace, real sustainable peace, we need to think how, of how important it is to achieve a commitment from all sectors, sectors of society, you know, not only the public sector, not only the government, uh, but also the private sector. They have a great responsibility and a critical, critical role to play. And also, all sectors of society, we all have to be committed to give equal opportunities to the poor. And if you offer equal opportunities to the poor, then we're talking about a more prosperous and stable country right. and, and a more prosperous and stable world. So, so you teach I do them hope that, that my kids understand that. Understand the bigger picture as well. The bigger picture and yeah. how important uh, it will be to, to for, for them to be committed to, to make a better world, you know, to, right. uh, to leave this world better than we found it. And that's actually my, the secret, the only yeah, thing the secret I can secret, think of, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> things I haven't said before, um, is that I secretly hope that my kids can become humanitarians. Of course, Your own I children. My own children, yeah. I don't, I don't know exactly for <clears throat> what causes, or I, would, I will never push anything to them, but I just hope that they, they, they are aware of the power that they can have as human beings right. uh, in, this, in this new world that we're building, because it is a completely new world. I mean, it's this fourth, we're going through the fourth industrial revolution, you know, everything is changing, right. and new realms are opening up in front of ourselves, ahead of us, but it also comes with many, many challenges. I mean, yeah. existing models, economic models are, are being disrupted, uh, and from here to 2050, there will be massive uh, growth of population, Starving. and there will be starvation if we don't feed 9 billion people. So we have to find smart ways, strategic ways, right. to, to sustain our planet. Right. Climate change, unemployment, so many and things. You want but your children. Well, Sorry, my children I mean, and all the children in the world, those yeah. 250 million kids who are at risk of not receiving enough uh, access to, to uh, stimulation, education, nutrition, all of those uh, elements that are, so vi that are going to be so vital to prepare prepare them, to prepare that's, them for what's coming. That's beautiful. I mean, yeah. we're already here, and we are already facing so many, many challenges. But there are, there are more to come. And our kids, not only my kids, your kids, and those 250 million kids who are at risk, need to be prepared to face them right. in smart ways, strategic ways. And for that, they all need access to education and information. Absolutely. That's beautiful, and something's going to make all of everybody angry. I've been told we've run out of time. Oh, <laughs> you're not going to talk just forever, just especially <laughs> when, it, when it comes to early childhood. God because. bless you. So you want your children not to be entertainers, but to change oh. society. <laughs> his dad's going to kill me because his dad want, wants one of them to be a football player, but right. I don't know about that. No, but really, yeah. whatever they do in life, even yeah. if they, you know, they dedicate their lives to making shoes or uh, whatever, that they feel passionate about, they can put it at the service of social good. And they can find creative ways to solve social problems, and we, as we all can. God bless you, Shakira. I thought <laughs> your secret was going to be that you're actually motivated by Bollywood. I love because Bollywood. I love Bollywood. Your hips don't lie song it has got some Bollywood. It does. Elements, yeah, right? it's inspired yeah. by it and greatly. Yeah. I don't know if anybody wants to do hips don't lie here. <laughs> God bless you. Thank, Thank you, you so much. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. God bless you.